We are here with Gabriella Paniche um, from the University of Edinburgh. We are in a small barn that is Scotland and it's pouring with rain outside. Gabby's work is with Golden Eagles, um, amongst other things. And I was lucky enough to spend about a week with her up in the Highlands chasing down some Golden Eagles. Really, we're here to find out a little bit about what she does, why she's doing it, how she does it, where she goes, all that sort of thing. So I think first off, can you, can you give us some indication of what your research is about? Right. So what I'm doing with the Golden Eagles is I am trying to use them to tell me something about the environment. Okay. And what I do is I look at their health. And to look at their health, what I do is I take blood samples from the chicks, because I cannot approach the adults. Why not? <laughs> they don't stay in the nest. It would be very difficult to catch an adult. Okay. Um, so enough. we stay with the little ones that cooperate. I take blood samples from them, and then just like the GP does with you when you go and see what's wrong with you, uh, that blood is going into a multitude of different tubes, uh, slides, cards, because each, each drop is going to give us an amazing amount of information. I, I run a blood profile, so I look at their cholesterol, I look at urea, I look at glucose and a whole load of things. And with that, I try to look into what is normal and what is not. Part of that sample as well is analysed for all the things that we put in the environment. So pesticides and fertilisers and rodenticides, which are things that we use to control rodents, um, mice and rats. And we shouldn't really be finding it on raptors, but I am using them, I'm using golden eagles again, because they are sitting at the top of the food chain and because they eat everything that is below them. So if we put something in the grass, then the rabbit is going to eat it, the fox is going to eat that rabbit, then another predator is going to eat that fox, and so on it gets to the, to the golden eagles. Okay. If I'm going to find something, if I'm going to have a chance to find something, it's going to be on them. So you're using the golden eagles to see what we're putting in the environment, essentially, and see if it's bad. Yeah. If it's affecting the golden eagles, it's probably affecting a bunch of other stuff as well that isn't going to be good. Mm -hmm. And how are the golden eagles doing, generally, in Scotland? Um, in Scotland, at the moment, they done recently a uh, census. So the census are done every three years or five years. Uh, no five idea. years, I think it is. <laughs> I just went blank. Um, and they had been stable in about 400 pairs for many years. 
And in the last census, the population increased a little bit. It is good, but this doesn't, doesn't mean that they're out of the woods. How long does it take you to trek into these nests? Um, some of them are accessible. When I say accessible, it means instead of four hour trek, it will be an hour trek. And, and when, you, when you're going to these nests, you know, you know where the nests are? You, you're aware, you're going straight to them? Is it a hunt? How do you I wouldn't there? even know where to start, but right. I rely on raptor experts from the Scottish Raptor Study Group, which have been monitoring the, the species for many, many years. Okay. And they go several times a year to check if the nest is being occupied, if there's eggs in there, if there's a chick, I go with them and they decide where to go and they decide how to approach a the nest, they access the nest and sometimes if I cannot access it then they bring the chick to me and then okay. they help me take blood. So it, it sounds like you're relying on a lot of people and a lot of people are helping you do your research and presumably they're helping each other do research and it's quite a large network of people that are involved. They, these people are, they're all paid, they're Volunteers? The majority of these people are volunteers okay. and they've been doing it since they were kids, many of them, for the love of it. They're supported by the Scottish Raptor Study Group, but they're not paid for this. Yeah, okay, wow. So they are passionate, truly passionate heroes, truly. Yes. conservation heroes. It sounds like that your work is a very good example of, of the, the hundreds of people that are involved in this sort of research that really you don't hear about which is, I think, quite an amazing thing. It'd be nice if they got an acknowledgement. The majority of what we are building on is research that has been going on for 60 years or wow. more. We really rely on all the work that has been done voluntarily to be able to, to design a project on top of it. Yeah. You've been looking for golden eagles for a few years now. <laughs> yeah. what, what tips have you got for spotting golden eagles in Scotland? <laughs> um, well, first, it has to be the highlands, otherwise you're not going to see much. Okay. That's a good tip. <laughs> Just look at the sky. They are huge. And if you think you've seen one and you're still in doubt, then it's more likely a buzzard. When you see one, you just know it is one. Okay. They are big, big. One good thing, if you're, if you're in an area that you think there could be, and you look at the skyline on a, on a hill, and you see little triangles, if you have binoculars, have a look at those. Sometimes they're standing there staring at you, just sometimes, making sure you're not going to approach. Sometimes they're rocks. Most okay. of the time they're rocks. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's a good tip. I'll keep my eye out for little triangles <laughs> on the skyline. Now, I know that there's a lot of other research that you're involved in that is not just golden eagles, which we're not going to talk about for this video. We'll talk about later, but hopefully we can come back and, and <laughs> uh, film you doing some of your other work. Um, but thank you very much. You're very and, welcome. Uh,